Good morning. Welcome back to the broadcast for Tarma Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRNAM for Thursday, September 15th, 2022. Our top story today, what you need to know before you enroll in Medicare this fall. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Frank Winter is with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Well, Frank, so good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thanks for having me on, Jeff. Yeah, it's great to great to talk to you. And I know we're approaching open enrollment season and there's a lot to get into in terms of Medicare and Medicaid, but I want to take a step back because many Americans, not many, but there may be Americans watching this program who may not know the role of CMS, the center, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. So before we begin talking about open enrollment, some of the things people need to think about, would you mind just doing a quick 10 seconds or 30 seconds on who CMS is? Sure. So we're the federal government agency that administers the Medicare program along with a number of contractors and grantees. Uh, we also, uh, we say co-administer or oversee the administration at the state level of the Medicaid program. Uh, we uh, oversee also the state health insurance marketplaces. Some people call that Obamacare. And, uh, you know, we, we provide some oversight for the states uh, and we directly uh, provide oversight uh, and run the federal marketplace, the states that don't have their own uh, state-run marketplace, then we, the federal government, uh, run those. And we um, also uh, handle a lot of uh, quality, safety, um, uh, responsibilities with health facilities. We want to ensure, and we do it. We uh, uh, handle a lot of uh, uh, oversight of federal regulations relating to safety and healthcare facilities. So basically, you don't do anything all day long. I'm just kidding. No, it's pretty you busy. <laughs> are, you guys are very, very busy. You have a very important role to play in healthcare. All right, Frank. Let's let's start off with some easy questions, and I want to talk about this open enrollment period first. What what is that period, and who is impacted by the open enrollment for Medicare? Sure. Well, for Medicare, it's October 15th through December 7th of each year. It's been those dates for quite a while. Um, it used to be some different dates, but for quite a while, it's been October 15th through December 7th. And this is the time when we encourage people to review their coverage and make sure they have the best coverage going into the next year. In advance of that enrollment period, sometimes people receive letters, information in the mail from Medicare, from the health plan they're enrolled in, uh, from Medicaid, if they have both Medicare and Medicaid. And we encourage them to read that information because it, it may relate to what your coverage is going to be like in 2023. And at a minimum, you want to review that information that you get in the mail. Uh, but we also encourage folks, if, if you can, either call 1-800-MEDICARE or go to our medicare.gov website to learn more about what you can do to review your coverage. You can do it yourself and, and the website or the phone number can also connect you with counselors who can help you uh, review your coverage because your needs may change and usually change from year to year, but also the coverage you get from a plan or even from original Medicare can change from year to year and so you want to make sure you have the best coverage for you, um, make the most informed decision about your coverage going into 2023. Really great explanation, Frank. Uh, informative for me, I'm, I'm 50, but at some point I'll probably be uh, declaring or enrolling in Medicare. So really good information. Uh, let me ask you, there are different parts. I always hear about Medicare Part A, Medicare Part B, Medicare Part D. Any way you can summarize, I, I, and I know that this is probably on the enrollment form, but some people watching this may not have access to a form and just may sure. just generally interested in what those parts are and do they need to sign up for them? Sure. Well, uh, Medicare parts A and B, we call original Medicare because they have been around since the beginning of the program when it was passed into law back in 1965. 
uh, those were the two parts of Medicare. A is, we sometimes refer to as inpatient coverage. It's coverage uh, at a hospital, uh, if you need to stay at a rehabilitation facility because maybe you broke your hip or you had a stroke and you need therapy, uh, that's covered under Medicare Part A. It's for the inpatient services. Part B, we refer to a lot of times as outpatient coverage. Um, it's for physician services, medical equipment, um, diagnostic testing, your outpatient hospital visit, that's billed to Medicare Part B. Um, and so those two parts form original Medicare. Um, part D is the newest uh, part of Medicare. And it's not really that new now. It's been around since uh, 2006. And that's the outpatient drug coverage piece, um, which is very important. Drugs have over the years become outpatient drugs have been a bigger part of our health care. And so that's an important um, uh, piece. And that is offered exclusively through standardized um, kinds of plans, uh, plans that have to, they're not the same, but they have to follow certain government rules um, and they're offered by private companies. Um, the last part of Medicare, we, we sometimes refer to as, as a choice, a different way to get your Medicare coverage. It's Medicare Part C. Some of you also may have heard of, uh, some of your viewers of Medicare Advantage uh, you see ads on TV sometimes for Medicare Advantage plans, or if you read your Medicare New Handbook, we send Medicare beneficiaries. It talks about Medicare Advantage. That's the same essentially as Medicare Part C. And that's another way for people to get their Medicare coverage through a private health insurance company. You'd get all of uh, the Part A and B uh, and D, if you'd like it, coverage through the Medicare Advantage plan. Um, sometimes they're will be additional benefits as part of that plan. Sometimes there may be some restrictions in terms of which providers you can see. Um, and uh, you know your Part B premium still has to be paid for, but depending on the plan, you know that, that Medicare Advantage plan uh, you know, could be available to you at no cost. There could be an additional premium. Thanks, Frank. Uh, let me just ask you before we go to a commercial break, I've got one more question. You're doing an excellent job. Let me ask you, if I am age 65 and I currently am working and say I intend to work until, I don't know, 70, do, must I enroll in Medicare or can I keep, if I'm part of my employer's plan or say I'm self-employed, can I use that ACA plan that I purchased through one of the states? Do I, do I need, I guess my, my question is, do I need to enroll in Medicare? Uh, it really depends on your situation. So if you are still working and you have coverage through that job, through that employer, then you can put off signing up for Medicare. Um, if your spouse has coverage and you're covered through your spouse's coverage that is based on her employment, whether it's employer or union, uh, you can put off uh, signing up for Medicare without a penalty. Yeah. If you are working, however, uh, but you're getting your coverage through another source like the marketplace, and it's not uh, in, considered employer coverage, it's not something that's offered to you by your employer, it's something that you are going out separately to sign up for, uh, then you would need to sign up for Medicare uh, when you become eligible um, at 65 if you age in, or there are also some other ways that people can be eligible for Medicare, but I don't want to take too long before the break. Yeah, thanks, Frank. And and like I said, I mean, this is we're painting very broad brushstrokes here. We're not giving any advice to people. We're all individuals. We're going to need to pursue and figure that out on our own. But I'm glad you could give us a, a brief summary, Frank. As I said, I need to take a very quick break. We come back. We'll talk more with Frank about enrolling in Medicare. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, 
the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you stuck with a low credit score? A credit report and score that's causing you to be denied credit or pay higher interest rates than others for the same things? Then do what Terrence did and called Credit Repair for your free credit evaluation to help restore your credit. I started thinking about buying a new house and my score wasn't where I needed it to be. I called and spoke with one of the representatives and we just had a good conversation and I, I liked what he was saying. Just one call for his free credit evaluation was all it took to start back on the track to repairing his credit. I'm seeing the deletions and I'm getting the report so I know something's being done. It does make a difference to me. All it takes is one call to get started. Credit repair has given me a second chance to have a better credit score. Don't let a low credit score hold you back another day. Do what Terrence did and make the call for your free credit evaluation. Call 800-819-4152. That's 800-819-4152. Again, 800-819-4152. At Empower, we help you open doors to get you ready for everything that lies ahead. Because your financial wellness is what matters most. Behind every door is an opportunity to save for life's moments. So proud of you. These are your goals, and it's time to help get you there. We've been opening doors for more than 17 million customers across America as they save for the future they want. We are Empower, and we're ready to open some doors for you. Welcome back. We're talking this morning to Frank Winter of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Frank, thanks so much for sticking with us this morning. Really appreciate you uh, you hanging around for segment two. Absolutely. Great to be on. All right. Let's, uh, you know, again, we're painting in very broad brushstrokes here about Medicare and everyone's going to have to do a little bit of research where they can find online or make a phone call. But um, let's talk about some pitfalls or maybe some things, some best practices that maybe we'll use. Uh, when you're enrolling in that Medicare program, either for the first time or you're re-enrolling uh, in, in Medicare, maybe you're choosing a different plan. What are some pitfalls for people to be thinking about so they don't make a mistake? Well, I think one of the big mistakes that people sometimes make when they uh, you know, reach the age of 65 uh, is they don't you know, uh, contact Social Security and ask about enrolling in Medicare and what the requirements are. You really, as you approach, really you shouldn't even wait to your 65th birthday. As you approach the age of 65, uh, it's a good idea to reach out to your local social security office for information about enrolling in Medicare. And then they can help you break it down for you with your individual situation. What are your next steps? Because there are errors people make. Sometimes people um, may, uh, extend their coverage through COBRA because they're they're leaving their job around their 61st birthday, they're retiring, and they think, well, COBRA is the same coverage uh, that I had when I was working. So that exempts me from the penalties for signing up for Medicare. I can wait as long as my COBRA lasts, right? No problem. That's not the case. COBRA does not protect you from a late enrollment penalty for Medicare because we don't consider it under the law to be employer coverage, even though it's the same coverage you had where you were employed. So there are these fine sorts of details that some people don't know about. Um, the other thing is I would advise people to be in good communications with your human resources folks providing you benefits, whether it's your employer or uh, your union. There are a lot of, I know we just, a lot of times folks approaching retirement, they just can't wait to, to get started. 
Um, but you really need to map out what are all my benefits? How do they work? What steps do I need to take um, to get things started? Uh, I used to do um, uh, seminars with a union in New York City, and there was someone there who would always say, uh, there's nothing automatic. Don't assume that anything is automatic relating to your retirement. And I think that's true. When you, whether you, it's signing up for Medicare, whether it's signing up for your employer uh, or union benefits, trust but verify. Make sure that when you took the step to apply or whoever you talk to, um, to, to take certain steps to move, move that process forward, that that has been followed up on. Don't assume that because you took the step, because you talked to someone, because you filled out a form, that that actually happened, um, that your benefits are going to start, that you have what you need. It's very smart because that's the most important time when you're first retiring to make sure everything is lined up. And then after that point, it's a matter of maintenance. You know, with Medicare, once you've initially signed up, initially selected your coverage, gotten good advice on that, then, you know, every year take advantage of that annual enrollment period and just, you know, am I happy with the coverage I have now? Read the materials from your plan if you sign up, if you're in a plan, uh, you know, you know, how is it changing going into next year? And then if you need to meet with the counselor or go online and compare your options, you know, during that open enrollment period to make sure you have the best coverage for next year. Yep. Give yourself enough time so that you can make the best. Yes. Yes. Do not Don't wait, wait till December 7th either. During no, that that, open that would not period. be a, that would not be a good thing. Last question, Frank, and I want to ask you this because our seniors are often our more most vulnerable both in terms of physical health, we certainly saw that with the COVID pandemic, but also in terms of security and privacy. And I, I read stories um, where people are fraudulently called and they give thousands of dollars to these faux Amazon or Target call centers. And I wonder if you just have a few, um, can offer a few warnings to those watching because some of our, our viewership is, is 65 and older. Are there things that we can be doing to protect ourselves, not only from Medicare, but, you know, just in general from from losing thousands of dollars, losing access, losing our privacy, et cetera? Yeah, people, folks need to protect your card. You know, be careful around um, one thing that I think a lot of people don't know, health fairs. Don't give out your personal information at health fairs for something that's free. People uh, have had their identity stolen in those types of situations. Uh, that information sometimes has been misused um, and people think, oh, I'm just getting some freebie, some uh, gift or something. And, and But why do they need your Medicare number then? Why do they need your social security number? Why do they need any personal information to give you something? That is something to be very suspicious of. And then, as you said, these cold calls and also emails out of the blue um, or pop-up websites, you know, don't click on those if someone calls you. Um, even if it seems like it's about an important issue, hang up. And then if they said they were representing Social Security or CMS or uh, whichever government agency, um, you know, look up the number yourself and call that agency. You know, if it's someone who says I'm representing Medicare, call 1-800-MEDICARE. If they say they're Social Security, call your Social Security office. Because they're not, we're not going to call you out of the blue. Social Security is not going to call you out of the blue about something. Number one, ever. Uh, but you know, it's it's the fact that you know someone may be calling you. Uh, they may even have a number on caller ID. They're spoofing where they can make their number look like it's a legitimate phone number. So never, you know, never give out your information. Never talk to someone uh, who's calling you out of the blue like that because one of the most common calls that our fraud hotlines get and uh, the, the work, people who work uh, to combat fraud and abuse um, in our program is folks who have just talked to someone who called them out of the blue and they gave out their personal information and said, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. I was, it was a little suspicious, but I was so concerned about what they said, or I probably shouldn't have clicked on that link, but I did. Don't be that person. Don't let your guard down. Better to just hang up the phone, not answer it if it's a cold call out of the blue. Um, there are other ways we get in touch some way, sometimes by mail, but just make sure that you are calling the legitimate number um, back for assistance. Um, you know, uh, be, you need to be very careful about that. Yeah, uh, it, it's just so sad that uh, 
people are doing that. And oftentimes our seniors are our most, most vulnerable. Frank, really appreciate you stopping by the program. Thanks so much for joining us. And we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon, my friend. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thanks for having me on. That wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, then drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more in all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content? Well, visit our website and, of course, our streaming partners. We're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRN AM. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.